<laughs> it went well. All right. Thank you, LTV. Yes. Uh, and we will continue to pray for Queen Domin's uh, coming uh, treatment. Um, there are no more um, expressions of thanks and gratitude. Uh, I would like to uh, thank once again um, all our participants this evening. Um, Sister Betty and Sister Amy uh, led our song service, and Brother Monte for rendering the uh, invocation. Uh, before our speaker. Oh, I want to really Sorry. Sorry. Go ahead. Uh, Brother Ulysses, our. Uh, Speaker this evening for the uh, second uh, session of the 40 days of prayer. So it's going to be 40 weeks, right? Not 40 days, 40 weeks of prayer, 40 midweeks. Uh, we're going to be blessed with a uh, musical rendition from Sister Lani. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, let's give her the time. That was your name. <laughs> we do a lot of things at the same time. I'm hot mess right now. <laughs> okay. All right. This is what happened, guys, when you leave. When there's nobody around, you do everything. <laughs> so we have an issue with our camera, if you notice that. But I'm still using the different camera right now. It still works. As long as we get the message that all that matters. Amen. Okay, so I'm going to sing a very familiar song, which you guys probably know, since we're talking about prayer, revival. So let's talk about also, like, prayer song, like song that more leading to one-on-one, -on -one, heart to heart talk with God. So I hope all of us can do this. I'm trying to find it right now. <laughs> That's the good thing about me, even if I'm already stressed, you don't see that, because I still smile. <laughs> All right. And uh, let's see if I have a good signal here, because it's not allowing me for some reason. Um, I hope you guys so far have a great week. All right, let me see. It's coming. Bear with me. Looks like it's not coming. <laughs> the internet connection is so bad. What's going on here? Let me just see if I can turn it off. I think there's a lot of piggyback. That's why it's not coming for some reason. It happens, it happens. Yeah, we just try the best we can. <laughs> Alright, here you go. Oh, 
Church as bride. It's number two. Where is it? The, uh, the church. The bride of Christ. <laughs> the church as Jesus' bride. I my note said the church as Jesus' bride. The bride of Christ. Um, I would like to read the questions so that um, we can think about them, and then we'll discuss. The, I think. the first question is, who is the bride of Christ? The question is who, not what, right? Who is the bride of Christ? Number two, how does Christ's bride make herself ready? That's the number two. How does Christ's bride make herself ready? Number three question. How does Paul describe the bride in Ephesians 5.27? How do you describe the bride? And uh, number four, one, two, three, four. What does the marriage, when does the marriage of the bride and Christ take place? And number five, when does Christ get his bride, the church, to take her to his father? So those are the questions that are given here. And uh, you know the answers, right? 
we already studied this many, many times. And let's uh, bow down for prayer. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for reminding us of the lessons. We may have heard this before, or we may have discussed it before, but thank you for the reminders. Thank you, Lord, that you are so eager, eager to bring your people home. And may we have that same eagerness that uh, we will do our best to work with you and to submit ourselves to you. Thank you for the grace, amazing grace. Thank you for love so great that we cannot even understand. Thank you for the Holy Spirit who will guide us and open our hearts to welcome you and then to be the king of our lives. Thank you for the forgiveness of sins and for hearing and answering our prayers. We ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay, the church. I assume that the answer is the church, right? The bride of Christ here, as we have learned many years ago, is the church. Am I right? Do you agree? Yeah. Okay. When does a woman become the bride? When? What happened before? Oh, there, there is this lady who becomes the bride, who becomes a bride. What happens so that a lady becomes a bride? They're, 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 what? He gets married? There has to be a relationship there should, first. There should be a relationship first. And then there should be an event that happens, right? Before she becomes a bride. Pastor Mike said they have to be engaged. In today's term, how do you say it? Be no. <laughs> In today's, uh, I can hear uh, the, the French. Uh, Fiance? Fiance? Is that for male? Fiance? No, for both. For both? Oh, okay. Fiance? No, fiance? Okay. So the bride is not yet married to the groom, correct? Or else they will be called wife and husband. So this is this part where they said, the pastor said, they are betrothed, they are engaged to be married. In Mary's time, this is Joseph, there is a ceremony, and then to the, according to the portrayal that we saw, there's the rabbi that pronounces blessing to them and wish them God's blessing to be fruitful, but they're not yet married. It's preparation before, correct? Right? So this is the time when they are preparing. So what does the groom do? while preparing for the wedding in their tradition. Bachelorette. Bachelorette. <laughs> Bachelorette party. <laughs> What's that? Preparing a house. Preparing a house. That's right. According to tradition, right, the groom will start to prepare the home where the couple will be living. That's why in John 14, 1 to 3, Jesus says, I'm going to prepare a place for you. He is using the imagery of the bride and groom. I like what he said. In my father's house are many mentioned. And if it's not true, if it's not enough, I'll build more. I'll prepare a place for you. He just wants to accommodate everybody. That's how he loves his wife. His, his bride. Okay. So, they're engaged. Uh, today, this is the stage where the couple plan their wedding. They think of their budget, and most of the time, they try to uh, borrow money so that they can plan for a wedding. They go to uh, marriage counseling, apply for their wedding license. Is that what's happening? So many preparations. They also choose the location of their wedding venue. Choose who will be their visitors, choose their color theme, their clothes, and so many things. The menu. The menu, right? The menu. The menu too. The food. The food. The food. <laughs> and the drinks. Yes. There's going to be a party without food. And the what? Dancing. Dancing. And the photographers, the videographers, 
last uh, Sunday we went with our son to fit his clothes in preparation for their wedding. I realized it's a lot of stress. <laughs> <laughs> it is also the time when <laughs> both fiancé pledge that they will stop entertaining the thought of dating another person. That's right. <laughs> you better. <laughs> <laughs> so you can see the parallel of being a bride and the church preparation. According to tradition, again, right, he, the groom tries to prove himself to be a good provider by preparing the home where the, more, the, where the married couple will live. And it is also the time for him to improve his money-making skills so that he can provide for the family. So many preparation. But in our times, do we, uh, most most of the t in our time, the the bride does all the thinking on the wedding preparation. Did you notice that? Yeah. The man, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't prepare that. Jocelyn did all the preparations. You're so blessed, man. For example, <laughs> I was fun. Um, so let's think about this. How does the church prepare to meet her groom? That's the question. How does the church, how do you prepare to meet the group? I can imagine that the bride has moments when she is alone, daydreaming, thinking about the group. Not sure about Huh? <laughs> Not true? The problem with us during these days is the preparation, the ceremony, occupies our mind more than the thought of the group. If you think about it, most of us are more excited about the second coming, the event. We preach it so much as if we are not so excited about the coming group. Sometimes the focus is on the event rather than the rather on the person itself. Did you notice that? After the wedding, they divorced. <laughs> but let me read this. Christ loved the church so much. Paragraph 2. The bride of Christ is dearly beloved by him. Jesus gave his life for her so that she could dwell with him forever. She, uh, he gave his life. Um, it says, there are some thoughts that the church is the apple of God's eye. Is that right? Did you hear that? Mm -hmm. So how do you know? When, when we say, when you, when you say to a person, you are the apple of my eye, and what does it mean? It means you're copying God's eye. You're the center. You're the center? Life. What's that? It means you're copying God's life. You're copying God's life? <laughs> one, one person said, when God said, when a person says, you are the apple of my eye, the distance is so close that you can see your reflection in the person that's saying that. There is a close proximity the distance is so close that when you look at this pupil, you can actually actually see your reflection in that person's pupil. And when God said, you are the apple of my eye, his distance to us is so close. He's, he was a very close relationship with us. So close that when we look at his eyes, if we can see his eyes, we can see our, our reflection in his eyes. That's how God loves us. Isn't it nice? But the question is, if we turn the point around, can Jesus see the reflection, his reflection in our eyes? Mm. Be like that. He is preparing so much, he is doing so much, 
but are we doing some preparations as well? It's so nice when Jesus said, I am going away, however, I will send you another comforter. Mm. And then in Matthew 28, I will be with you even unto the ends of the world. It's so nice to think that although Jesus is in heaven preparing a place for his bride, his presence is felt among his people through the presence of the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. He does not leave his bride alone. He loves his bride so much that he wants to be his with his wife, even though physically they are far apart. That's how Christ loves you. That's how Christ loves us. Do we love him as much? So, Jesus expects a spotless bride. But while in heaven, there is the idea of investigative, investigative, how do you pronounce it? Investigative judgment. What is investigative judgment? How do you understand it? The Seventh Adventists. What is investigative judgment in your mind? Scrutinizing your life. What's that? Your life is like under a microscope. What you call that Scrutiny. Magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. Magnifying glass. The idea of investigative judgment sometimes and many times brings fear and uncertainty to church members, correct? Yeah. yeah, because just think about it. If you read Great Controversy, the angels, right, are writing, are recording all our actions, the words that we say, the motives behind our actions, the thoughts that we have. The thoughts that even that they even they were not vocalized, right? They are requiring with terrible accuracy. Exactly. So it's a, it, the thought, right, brings fear in the Christian's mind. However, there's a thought by Jack Jack C. Where? Sikera. Yeah. That investigative judgment is actually a very blessed thought for us. Think about Satan is the accuser. And every time Satan tempts us and we fall, he comes to Christ and says, you don't have a right for this man because look, he tempted, he succumbed, he's mine. We will toast together in him. That's the dream, right? So every minute, every time Satan tries to tempt us and we fall, he goes to the courts of heaven and accuses us. And Jesus says, yeah, yes, I agree, he fell. But look, he's also asking for forgiveness. Amen. And my grace is sufficient for him. Amen. Isn't it nice? Yes. Grace. We talk about grace and grace. It's so overwhelming. I mentioned last Monday that even the power to forgive, the ability to forgive, can be done only through the grace of Christ. Amen. It's all grace. We are so dependent. So, Jesus is doing all the preparation. He wants his bride to be ready. He wants his bride to be spotless. That's why he offers the grace of forgiveness. That's why he offers the presence of the Holy Spirit to lead his bride hand in hand. Because he doesn't want to let go of his bride. What are we doing then? In preparation for the wedding feast. What are we supposed to do? Since Christ is doing everything. What do we do as the Recipients of grace. What? Be faithful. How? Connected to the vine always. Connected to the vine. How? Spend time with Spend time with God. How? He's the only God in our lives. 
no, and I always no ask more, how. No more going to another. Yeah. <laughs> no, no more, no more thinking of dating another person, another thing. Knowing him more. Pavel Goya said that when you sleep at night, what bothers you most before you fall asleep, that is your God. If you don't believe, just watch this series on Holy Spirit. What bothers you most before you sleep? That's what you're focusing on. What if there's none? <laughs> I don't want to answer that. My answer is that. <clears throat> Look, Jesus wants us to what? To respond to his love. All we need to do at this point is to accept the merit. First is the acceptance, right? Mm -hmm. Acceptance. And then after we accept his blessings, we apply it into our lives by how? By submitting to his commands. Trust and obey. Trust and obey. Mm -hmm. As it has always been said, said the, the manifestation. What's the other word for manifestation? Evidences. The evidence, the evidence of the Holy Spirit working in our lives is directly proportional to our submission to him. Amen. It's always that. If we think that the Holy Spirit is not being poured in this world, just listen to Pastor Dan's talk about the Palawan project, Pastor Mark of Pastor Mark's observation in Philippines, mm -hmm. how they respond to God's call. Mm -hmm. Why is it that it seems that the Holy Spirit is not being poured in our place? Maybe the Holy Spirit is being poured, but we are just busy that we don't notice him. Maybe he is knocking at the doors of our hearts, speaking to us through the still small voice, but it is being drowned by the screams and shouts of this world and the clamorings of our flesh. And Jesus is sad because after all the preparations that he's doing, as if we are taking him for granted. How can we be pure before the hope before God? The only way we can be pure before God, again, is to accept his grace and then accept his cleansing blood and then walk hand in hand with him. Mm. The Holy Spirit is the gift that brings all gifts in its train. Isn't that nice? But it is the gift that we neglect most when we pray. He is the only person who is responsible in helping us to get ready to meet the groom. And enveloped or covered and led by the Holy Spirit in our choices, Jesus sees in his church a perfect and lovely bride. That's all I have for tonight. Amen. And I hope you're blessed. Amen. Well, by the way, can I tell you? Uh, just before you stood up there, I was saying, all right, I'll preach next next Monday. And this, the voice said, preach the bride of Christ. And they still don't say, don't about the bride of Christ. <laughs> Are you, you're becoming a prophet. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you very much, uh, Brother Yuli, for the uh, very clear and powerful presentation. And uh, now we're going to uh, have our uh, prayer request for before we have our prayer session. Um, Pray for uh, uh, yes, Brother uh, nursing home um, residents there. Trying to follow the gospel, struggling with smoking and struggling with other habits, and trying to keep it out, knock it down, and not it back down, and not going back. It's a struggle. Pray for them. Uh, 
and, uh, and also one of them is Janet. She's in rehab now. She had fallen and broken the leg. So let's just pray for her. Okay, so uh, we'll pray for the uh, minister of Brother John to a nursing home and the residents there are struggling to uh, overcome sin. <laughs> well, if they accept Christ, then uh, they will overcome sin. So let's pray that they will surrender to Christ. Uh, any more, any other? Okay, Pastor Dan. Let's pray that uh, this concept of having the spirit working our legs becomes a reality. Yes. Yes. Because many times it's a concept. Study and discuss it. But uh, the manifestation in our lives seem is evasive and uh, and uh, it's a dream uh, that sometimes what? we don't fully experience. Mm -hmm. what? 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 Um, just want to share uh, Sister Lani's uh, song. It's very, very, it has become very uh, meaningful in my life when I watch a documentary in one of the uh, channels in the Philippines. There was a man who almost died of COVID. He was uh, in St. Luke for months. And you know, the first wave, when uh, you are diagnosed with COVID, uh, it's like a death sentence. Mm -hmm. yeah. But this, this man is so close to God. He's a Christian. And he, he kept on begging the Lord to preserve his life and uh, that granted his petitions and when he was recovering the doctors and the nurses thought of singing a song for him they organized themselves they sang this song live me Lord mm -hmm. and while he was listening there were tears flowing his eyes and they asked the wife, why, why is he so emotional? And the wife said, don't you know that he was the writer of the song? Oh. Oh. Jay Clance. And after he recovered, he said, the Lord planted in my heart that song, not knowing that it will be the message of the Lord for me. You see, when, when we encounter uh, experiences like that, the more we sense the closeness of the Holy Spirit. How I wish and how we wish we can go through an Amen. encounter, not a death, death, uh, near death experience, but something that's going on in our lives that we can certainly say is the world of the Holy Spirit. Man. That's true. Are we online? <laughs> So I can't say it. So uh, let's pray that uh, we'll have a genuine uh, encounter with the Holy Spirit, with God working in our lives, that will transform us. Okay? Yeah. Um, yes? Think back on Pastor Dan's thought, I was just recently thinking about that concept of the Holy Spirit that said, you know, we really believe that the latter rain is going to pour. I would pray like the disciples at the first time. Let's see. I don't think so. I don't think we really believe that we are really praying for that. I don't think we think it's urgent. We know it's coming, but it's right. It's right. So Where do you see in church? Put it on the side. It's not something that we should. That's what I do see in church. Any more uh, prayer requests? Uh, I think Brother Enrique asking for you know continued healing. While yes, uh, let's continue to pray for Brother Enrique. Of course, at the only. And for at the only. Yes. 
who else? And those who are sick, uh, we're going to be able to mention the name. Several insurance for sick. Yes, Pastor yeah. Mike. Yes, uh, Pastor uh, Mike. We continue praying for our voice of prophecy students and our Bible stud studies going on. And we will pray also for the newly additional care group that we have. And we have our uh, next meeting in the house of Richard and Rachel Galileo this coming Sabbath afternoon after the divine worship. So we have some non-Adventist invitees. Hopefully they will come because this is enriched and outreach care group. Care with people, caring Adventists, try to be ready for eternity. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Magda, once again, for your initiative to uh, start new care groups. Uh, yes, uh, Pastor Dan. Our missionaries for the natives are starting another series of evangelism starting next week. So let's pray for our uh, uh, intervention. All right. Yes, okay, now then. Let's pray for my co workers' uh, wife who was diagnosed with cancer. Her name is Joanna. Joanna. Okay. From Zoom. Anybody else on Zoom who would like to uh, request for prayer? For the Holy Word. Please pray for my uh, my family. Uh, I'm <coughs> witnessing to them, as well as uh, as well as friends. That's is this Dave? Yes. Okay. Somebody said for the world, it's true. Um, there are no more prayer requests, then um, I'm going to ask uh, two more uh, people to pray. I will start, then. Um, I request uh, Brother John and uh, Pastor Dan to close. Um, those who are able to kneel, please uh, kneel with us. Or I will stand so you can see me here on camera. Let us pray. Oh Lord, we believe your promises that when we come together in your name, in your mighty and powerful name. We are lifted to the court of heaven and our prayers are heard. And you prepare the best answer to our prayers. First Lord, we would like to acknowledge that we are sinful, but we thank you for your grace for your wonderful grace that is always available. It's like what uh, our speaker mentioned this evening, that even if the enemy is causing us to stumble and fall, but your grace always lifts us up and give us another opportunity to move on and to grow. Thank you also, Lord, for all the blessings that we have received this week for the healing of those who are sick. Yes. We thank you for your continued presence for those who are suffering. Yeah, uh, for some people, suffering may linger for a while, but even there, oh Lord, we promise that like a good shepherd, you will be with them to strengthen them and to help them grow in faith. Oh Lord, we have specific Prayer request this evening. Uh, Brother Ken John is requesting a special prayer for the people he's ministering to 
of the nursing homes that have their own personal struggles. But they need to overcome the vices and tendencies to sin. Oh Lord, you know that it is only possible through the power of the Holy Spirit. So help them to acknowledge that there is a higher power that will help them, that is available for them. That they will just fully surrender themselves. So help them only to come to you. We pray also for the uh, prayer request uh, from Pastor Dan, which is really true. We need to experience, Lord, genuine transformation. But we need also to have this desire, the thirsting, the hungering for the Holy Spirit, just like the experience of the disciples before the Pentecost. Oh Lord, you promise that all prayers may not be answered right away, but when we pray for the Holy Spirit, right away you are willing to respond. So help us to pray for the Holy Spirit continually and to experience in our lives and the transform, transform, transforming power that you want to give to each one of us. We pray, O oh Lord, for Brother Enrique, uh, that uh, he will continue to come strong. We're glad that he's able to go back to work and uh, join us once again in the work services. But uh, he needs to be 100%. Same thing, I pray for Ationi. Thank you for the success of her operation conducted by Dr. Caucus and uh, her team. Thank you that uh, she's on her way to full recovery. And I pray also, Lord, that you help her uh, with uh, the things that she needed to do so she'll be able to return home safely to Orlando. We also pray, Lord, for our other members, uh, there are many of them in our church. Please uh, heal them and those who are feeling discouraged. Uh, some are also sick, not only physically, but emotionally and um, relationally and spiritually. Please heal them all, Lord. We also pray for our VOP stu students, uh, especially those who are led by Pastor Lagra uh, in the nursing home and uh, his other uh, Bible study uh, group with uh, Sister Marie. We also pray, Lord, for uh, the care group that, uh, that will start, that will begin uh, in uh, uh, Richelle Galileo's and Richard Galileo's house is coming seven. That uh, the people they invited, especially uh, those who are not members of our church, will be uh, blessed by the uh, study of your word. We pray, Lord, for we know them's co worker, Joanna. Uh, you understand her situation. And uh, sometimes in medical. Perception, some cases may be hopeless, but there's nothing that's hopeless in your sight, O oh Lord, because you have the power to heal. We also pray, Lord, for uh, Brother Dave's family. Uh, they may be undergoing through some uh, challenging times. Help them, O oh Lord, to understand your leading in their lives and how much you want to help them. We also pray, Lord, for the whole world. There are many uh, people who are suffering. It is caused by uh, man-made calamities like wars, conflicts, uh, injustices. We pray, Lord, that you help them. And may those who are uh, leading the world respond to your power, that they will perform their duties according to your will and execute judgment according to your will. We also pray for those who are affected by natural calamities like flooding in Asia and other parts of the world. There are uh, uh, also uh, people suffering from famine caused by these uh, natural calamities. And uh, I pray, Lord, that you help also those who are trying to reach out, those who are in harm's way. Once again, we thank you, Lord, for 
the assurance that you heard all our prayers because you're a loving God. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for the opportunity to be at prayer with you today. Thank you that you've given us this uh, opportunity to pray as a gathered reverend. Uh, and this is the, about the closest we can get, uh, apart from walking up to the door, some address, up to the door, um, the, the great thing we like to have to go to see God Jesus said he's preparing a place for us to do that. And so we look forward. Thank you for the hope. And let's not disappoint the people who love us today. He's hoping that we cannot hear you. And Lord, we continue to pray. We want to thank you for your blessings. We want to remember the message today. Um, we really do need to take the Holy Spirit more seriously than we do and uh, prepare for the latter rain. So Lord, we just want to ask that you would not pass us by when you pour out your Spirit. And show us what we need to do to prepare for his outpouring. God will bring his work to a close with no less power than he started it. And we want to be part of that. So may we, like the disciples, cleanse our hearts from sin, pursue holiness, pursue righteousness. Pursue the opportunity to work for you in your field, to bring in, to sound the loud cry and bring in the harvest. Lord, we look forward to these days. Uh, bless us until then. And Lord, we also pray that you teach us how to pray. Sometimes we hear of people's illness and and accidents and sickness and we always want to pray that God will heal them and that's good but sometimes it is a crucible that God has allowed to to grow character and so teach us to always pray in your will and that you would do that you'd allow whatever problem that we go through to do its work so that when we come out when we come out I go try to fire Thank you for your love. Thank you for watching over us. Bless our families, especially our children who are now back in school. May they be successful. Bless the teachers that they will know how to lead them to Christ. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, O Lord, for reminding us of your great love. We are unworthy, Lord. We are defective, we are imperfect, but you have chosen us as your bride and you promise that you will do your best to prepare us. Help us, Lord, to focus on you as the groom. Help us to trust you, help us to submit to you for whatever you want us to do Help us to do our part, but uh, always reminding us that it's your grace, it's your power. Lord, forgive us because when we think about the wedding, as reminded to us tonight, we are looking at the timeline. It's good to study about the signs of your coming. It's good to know that you're coming soon. But sometimes our focus is not on you, but on the events going on. So Lord, 
help us to love you more. Help us that when we wake up and before we sleep, our minds will be focused on you, on how we will do our part in preparation, not only in meeting you, but in the life that we will be spending with you for eternity. Lord, we pray for those who don't know yet about your love. Help us, Lord, to always have the passion to share you with those people who don't have yet this hope. Instead of looking down on them because they are not part of our church, help us to love them the way you love them. We pray for evangelistic meetings that will be going on, Bible studies that are being done. We especially mention the evangelistic series to be done among the natives starting next week. May they can sense your spirit guiding them and may we see bountiful harvest of souls being prepared for your kingdom. And Lord, give us the passion to be part of your mission to bring more people to your kingdom. And as we involve ourselves in these activities, we ourselves also is being transformed. Because we cannot just say trust and yet we're not doing our part. So Lord, grant us now the blessing that you know is best for us as we separate from one another. And may you always remember our families. We may be searching for other souls, but they may be souls in our families that need to be reached. Yeah. There are times when we don't know already, Lord, what to do. But we trust your power. We trust that you love them more than we love them. And so we submit them to you. Looking forward to meeting you with our loved ones too and spending eternity with you. Thank you for hearing and answering our prayers. We ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Once again, we'd like to thank you for joining us. And uh, we pray that uh, we'll see you again next week. Amen. Amen. Have a good night. Okay, good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. I know also doesn't have the, the book yet. This is the book that we were doing. Uh, Prayers and Devotion and God's End Time Church uh, by Dennis Smith. This is book eight. It's like purplish color. You can buy an ABC. They're on sale. All right. So hopefully more people will be joining us. God bless you until next midweek. Good night. Good night. Good night. Listen, listen to I just want to share with you something. I don't know if you remember, I have a nephew that offshoot in the Philippines that is made like the pastor of this the group that says uh, they would they left the church because the church is Babylon. They are not worshiping inside the church, they're worshiping inside houses. Do you know that the other Ay, no, tamat na, tamat na. So we've been praying about him like